Hey guys, just did a little bit of a stream here. I'm going to do the same thing on a recording for YouTube. Real quick, um, QQQ this morning, if you follow me on my son's Discord channel, you said that I think, I told, oh, I told you that 308 and change would be hit this morning no matter what. Um, CTPR, I don't know what the hell that is, penny stock I did. Um, and when we got this move in the morning to the upside, um, the resistance level is right up here. I, I took a little short. Actually, I was planning to add to it. If we hit that level, I thought we would have hit the 313. We didn't. And all I was looking for was, you know, I was pretty confident that we would um, hit the 308 level at some point today or tomorrow. Um, more so today than I thought tomorrow. I thought this would happen today. And you can kind of see this is the morning to bounce here. We retest the area. We make a higher high. And that's when my short came into play. We go down and we fail holding this little level. We got some agitation. And then we break down and then we touch my little blue line here at 308.50, um, which I think will hit again if we haven't hit it already. I think it's going to hit again for sure. Um, and who knows how we'll react there. Uh, more importantly, IWM, same thing. TZA support was at 37. Um, that was a good trade there. The reason the support was at 37 was if you look at it, um, the other day on TZA, that was the resistance level, double top where we pushed through on big volume. And we came back and we tested that area and now we're kind of grinding back higher again. And then more importantly, GameStop today was a definitely a noteworthy move in GameStop. Um, I said the resistance level would be 128. And you can see this morning, look at this little early move here, 128. And once we busted through 128, it took a few shares for a little trip. I thought we'd get to 155. That's the next resistance level. And we did. I sold it and we extended it to 174.67, 175, but we actually got even higher up to the 177 area. The reason 174.67 is one of my levels is because that's the washout kind of low area from the 300s where the, where the stock completely came apart. That now becomes resistance. And within the context of that resistance area, we have a battle going on between my old resistance at 155, um, which is now support, and that new resistance level, um, which is now 174. Look at that. Tap it once, tap it twice, three times. I just think there's too much overhead supply here for this to get pushing through there. If it does, I think your next stop is just below my 188 resistance. I don't see it happening. Um, and then support, which I expect to fail at the 155, and we'll go down and test 147, which is an area where I might be a little bit of a, a buyer there for a nice little move back up to 155 um, and then higher. It's going to be a lot of confusion, but the easy money was made there. I thought 117 um, would be an area of interest this morning. We did hit that area. Actually, I thought 120 would, would probably be an area we'd probably hold, but we pushed through there. 117 then became support, and then we went right back up and attacked the 128. And once we pushed through, the volume was massive. You can see the big spike there. You always get that big morning move because all the orders that are preloaded, but that move there was, was pretty intense um, this morning. Um, once we broke through 128, that really got the shorts upset and you get this massive squeeze again. But I think it's, it's time and energy here. And once that time of those movements starts to erode, it's not in your favor in GameStop. I think you have really quick short-term movements so I do expect this to roll over and retest the 155, and I think we'll break through. Looking for 146, 147 and change to be tested. Like I said, once you look at the uh, move in between these two areas that are little battleground areas, 155 to 174, 70, you're going to see if you even run a Fibonacci there, um, that we got up to what the ones. I think we got back up to 61.8 and failed. So if we stretch that out, you'll see this last bounce was right on the 23.6 within the context of this framework here. We went back up and hit the 61.8% retracement, and now we've pulled back down, and you're literally kind of battling between the 38.2 and the 50, 164, 162. I think it's eventually going to break, and we're going to go down and retest the low, which I do not think will hold. Um, so I am looking for 147 um, on the stock um, probably later today or tomorrow. If I'm wrong and you get a fourth test of this 174 and we push through and hold it, not for one second or one minute for you know a five-minute chart, 
Um, a five minute candle, you're gonna get a move probably up to the 186, 187 area. I don't see that happening. In fact, the cues are now back down to test that area that I talked about that was really important. 308.50, energy area, you know? Can you go through? Yeah, but it's like a magnet. It wants to snap back. If you pull back further, you probably want to snap back up to it again. So keep an eye on that. That's my thoughts for the day. Um, did a couple trades um, on Bitcoin related stocks this morning right off the get go. Other than that, really haven't done much. Um, NVAX also had a decent bounce today from a Fibonacci level that I have in my um, notes. Started buying a little bit before it even got there because I don't know whether it will hit that level, especially when you're already down, you know, 17, 18% at that point, 20%. I mean, it had a 38 point drop, I think, at that point and caught a little move from, I think I got in at 161. I didn't, I didn't catch the low um, and then moved up to, I don't even know, I got it at like 172 and it's at one, it hit 174. So um, nice move, 12 point move from the bottom there on 50 shares isn't bad. So, <clears throat> wow, I think this was news related, something to do with them not having enough raw materials or something to keep up demand. Seems like a good uh, problem to have. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the news that I, that I pinpointed that's correct, but keep an eye on GameStop numbers that I talked to you about. Still, market still looks bearish in my opinion, selling into the news. Uh, I mean, selling into strength. Uh, but that could change, you know, after that selling subsides and you get enough of a washout and some of these speculative issues, you start to find some stability here in the market. In fact, let me look at supply. I haven't really looked at that in a while. Um, my support level was right in here. We broke through it, went back, kind of gravitated around. Kind of think we pulled back that level too on support. And you know, for me, I've been looking for 290s in the in the queue on the one year daily for a while. It just seems the market wants to buy every dip at, at some point. This is the number that I'm looking for. That's gonna change in time. 292, 293, which is hell of a lot lower than we're at right now. But that doesn't mean you just go out and short the market. You have to find your levels um, of resistance because we were getting oversold on the daily and the 20 minutes and stuff like that, the hourly. So I expect bounces and then the bounces to be sold into. And I do expect us to gravitate a little bit lower here, at least expect on the cues um, for you long-term buyers, a pivot here, maybe of some interest, um, somewhere to kind of grind into the lower part of this candle here, which would be around 301 or 32. Um, but we got a little bit of a battle going on right now at the 308.50. We'll see how that pans out. It may hold, but we'll see. 